guys, this is Matt Brunet, and welcome to Movie News Weekly, hosted by Filmbook. Now before we begin, let's take a look at what we got in this week's news. Which includes Infinity Records, Fast and Animated, Not in the Universe Yet, What the Director Has to Say, A Sneak Peek of the Remakes, Film 5, Illumination's New Pets, Paramount Tunes, Rocky is Flying Back, and The New Captain of the Ship. So with that said, let's get things started. You want a big record? Well, here it is. Avengers Infinity War came crashing into the box office and immediately set some major new records this weekend alone. Not only does it have the biggest opening in the month of April and of spring, and most likely of 2018, but it also has the biggest opening of all time both domestically and worldwide, making a total of $250 million and $630 million globally. The movie also has the record of the world's biggest Saturday and Sunday single day gross. As you can imagine, no other movie is capable of reaching to the levels of the Avengers, or ever will for the weeks to come. In second place, A Quiet Place managed to hold an 8 digit number gathering more than 10 million dollars, while I Feel Pretty shows more power than Rampage, where the comedy got into third with 8 million, and the Dwayne Johnson action movie stands close to Amy Schumer with 7 million. Following from behind includes Black Panther with more than $4 million, Super Trooper with more than $3.5 million, and Truth or Dare with more than $3 million. With 8 movies now, it would be about time to just make a TV show out of it. Netflix has announced that they are working with DreamWorks Animation Television in order to make a new animated series based on the Fast and Furious franchise. DreamWorks' Tim Hedrick and Gret Handlin will executive produce along with the franchise's own Chris Morgan, Neil Moritz, and Vin Diesel. The story will be about Dom Tormello's cousin, Tony, and his friends who have to infiltrate a racing league that could be run by an evil organization that wants to take over the world. Margie Cohn, the president of DreamWorks Animation Television stated, We are excited to extend and expand our successful relationship with Netflix by not only delivering more high quality DreamWorks programming, but connecting fans of Universal films with fascinating new stories. Our new home at Universal marks an exciting new chapter for storytelling at our studio and Fast and Furious is only the beginning. I know the deal is exciting at first, but let's wait until Disney can even close the deal first. In an interview with The Playlist, Marvel Studios head Kevin Feige explained that the Marvel characters whose film rights belong to 20th Century Fox will not appear in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the foreseeable future, or at least in Phase 4 of the franchise. Feige stated, No, because any of that deal would take a while to get going and years from whenever and if ever it happens, so certainly it won't impact the five movies we've announced and it probably wouldn't impact anything for a handful of years after that. Because really, we're not thinking about that. We're thinking of delivering on what we promise. Any movie, especially for any characters we don't have the rights to yet until someone tells us we do, would be even further after that. The characters he's referencing to that are from Fox includes the X-Men and Fantastic Four. The latest update from the Disney and Fox merger is that the plans are going smoothly and are expected to close the deal at the end of next summer. Let's have the man speak for himself for his next work. At CinemaCon, Quentin Tarantino along with Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio got onto stage to discuss about their next movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, mentioning that this will be the film that will have the strongest similarities to his 1994 film Pulp Fiction. Tarantino stated, Sony and myself will be coming to the theaters with the most exciting star dynamic since Paul Newman and Robert Redford. It's very hush hush and top secret, but I can tell you that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood takes place in 1969, at the height of the counterculture hippie revolution and the height of New Hollywood. Street by street, block by block, will transform Los Angeles into Hollywood of 1969. DiCaprio added, It's hard to speak about a film that we haven't done yet, but I'm incredibly excited to work with Brad Pitt, and I think he's going to transport us. I'm a huge fan of Singing in the Rain, movies about Hollywood. As an LA native, having read the script is one of the most amazing screenplays. We are going to do our best job to make it fantastic. 
Tarantino's next movie will be ready to come out in theaters on August 2019. Disney has a lot of magic to present next year. At CinemaCon, Disney presented many sneak peeks to their upcoming lineup to the audience of theater owners. These include their upcoming roster of live-action remakes based on their animated classics that will be coming out next year. The first was the most anticipated of them all, The Lion King by Jon Favreau, where they showed a little clip of the opening scene with the song The Circle of Life, where Rafiki presents the newborn Simba to all the animals at Pride Rock. The next one is the Tim Burton film based on the 1941 movie Dumbo. The only information revealed about the footage is that it only presented the elephant, but not flying. An image of what the new Dumbo looks like managed to get leaked online. Finally, attendees got their first ever look of Aladdin starring Will Smith as the genie, where he said in the clip, Disney knows how to do it. This is going to be beautiful. All these clips were said to have received positive reactions from those who witnessed the clips. All these movies mentioned will be prepared in theaters in 2019. The Underdog Studio still has some tricks up their sleeve. Laika, the studio that made the recent acclaimed stop-motion animated films like Coraline and Kubo the Two Strings, announced that they are currently working on their fifth animated film, which will be directed by Paranorman Helmer Chris Butler and distributed by Annapurna. The story will be a globe-trotting comedy adventure, bursting with humor, heart, and a profound message of acceptance and finding one's place, and will have an all-star cast including Hugh Jackman, Zach Galifianakis, and Zoe Saldana. Travis Knight, the CEO of Laika, and currently the director of Bumblebee, stated, Our next film represents an evolutionary shift for Laika. It's an exciting bridge to our future. Director Chris Butler and the Wizards at Laika have crafted a movie work of art, layered with wit and imagination and soul. Plus, it's really, really funny. It's a privilege to partner with Megan and her exceptional team at Annapurna to bring this beautiful original story to the world. The film currently has the temporary title of Film 5, meaning that it's Laika's fifth film. We got some new dogs to train here. Universal Pictures revealed the new and returning cast that will lend their voice in the sequel of Illumination Entertainment's The Secret Life of Pets. While Kevin Hart, Jenny Slate, Eric Stone Street, Ellie Kemper, Lake Bell, Dana Carvey, Hannibal Brudeness, and Bobby Moriham are set to return, the newcomers of the franchise include Tiffany Haddish, Patton Oswald, Nick Kroll, Peter Holmes, and Harrison Ford. The big significance with the latter is that this will mark as the first time ever that the actor will voice with an original character for an animated feature. Also, sources have stated that there is a strong possibility that Oswald will be replacing Louis C.K. as the voice of Max, whom last year the comedian was kicked off of the cast of the controversy spread out regarding his past sexual misconducts. Chris Renault and Brian Lynch will return as the director and writer respectively, and the movie is set to be released on June 7th, 2019. They got more tunes coming in! Paramount Animation has announced at CinemaCon this week its new lineup of animated films that will be arriving in the upcoming years, along with a description of some of their stories. The first is Luck, which they will collaborate with Skydance Animation, directed and written by the same guys who did the Kung Fu Panda films like Jonathan Albert, Glenn Berger, and Alejandro Carloni, which the latter is taking the helm, it's a comedy that pulls back the curtains on the millennial-old battle between organizations of good luck and bad luck that secretly affect our daily lives. Next is Monster on the Hill, which will be directed by Matt Lieberman and Ian Cohen with real effects with a 2020 release date. The story is about where monsters are tame and monster wrestling is a popular sport. Teenage Winnie seeks to follow in her father's footsteps as a manager by turning an inexperienced monster into a contender. Finally, Paramount also revealed a bit of information of the third SpongeBob SquarePants movie. While no plot is revealed, the title will now be It's a Wonderful Sponge, and it will be directed and written by Tim Hill. That film also has a late 2020 release. Here's a sequel you never expected to happen. Ardman Animations officially announced that they will be making a sequel to their first animated feature, Chicken Run. The plot hasn't been revealed just yet, but the company is collaborating with Studio Canal and Pate in order to finance the feature. As for the people involved, there is no word if the original director, Nick Park, will lend a hand, but it will be directed by Paranorman Sam Fell. Also, the movie's original writer, Karen Kirkpatrick, will come back to write the script with John O'Farrell. 
The original Chicken Run has been regarded as possibly the biggest stop motion animated feature ever made. Not only did it receive massive critical acclaim, but it also received a total of $225 million at the box office, more than any other stop motion movie. The film is also claimed to be responsible for the creation of the best animated feature category at the Academy Awards. No release date has been announced, but they did reveal that production will begin after they finish up Shaun the Sheep movie, Farm Again. You will refer to her as either Captain or Ma'am. Paramount Pictures is officially hiring S.J. Clarkson in order to direct the fourth Star Trek movie, making her the first female director of the modern franchise. This will be the second Star Trek film that will be in production. The other is the R-rated film that will have Quentin Tarantino attach and possibly be the director, while The Revenant's Mark L. Smith will be writing the script. Many of Clarkson's recent works actually can be found in Netflix, but some can show that she can fit right into the sci-fi world. She did the directorial job of Collateral with a script by David Hare, made pilots for both Marvel series Jessica Jones and The Defenders, and she directed the episode Vinyl Dig for Orange is the New Black. While Tarantino is currently busy working on his next movie, next year's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, it is highly likely that Clarkson's Star Trek will go into production first. And that's all I've got for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to head on down to film-book.com for all the latest movie and TV news, along with their columns on the box office and their theatrical release schedule. Also, you can follow them on whatever social media you'd like. And while you're at it, you can follow me on my YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter if you're more into stuff like animation, Disney, and my weird sense of humor. If you are watching this on YouTube, then hit that like button and come subscribe to us and also leave a little comment on what you think on the news this week. If you are listening to this on a podcast on iTunes or any other podcast service, then don't forget to rate and review what you just heard. Tune in next time for another round of Movie News Weekly and until next week, see you later dudes!